Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon uh, we meet again today and I'm going to talk about conditions, surgical condition what we call as hemorrhage one of the common admissions to surgical ward can occur in any age group but usually young adolescents and presented with painful swelling protrudes at the NS during defecations, dribblings of the blood after defecations, bright red, and not uncommon, they come with pruritis and itchiness around the anus because of leak of this mucosal uh, intestinal contents, because of failure of the anal cushion to function properly. And because actually. Uh, effect in the lifestyle of the individual. So before we understand what is hemorrhoids, 20-30 years ago uh, people associate this hemorrhoid as parts of the varices, eh? parts of the varices where your systemic and this uh, varicial anastomosis can happen at a, at a few parts of the body like carpal malaria, back area of the liver, including the superior and middle rectal vessels. But that is actually, that theory actually is not true. Hemorrhage actually is a cushion of uh, vascular tissue at present at the inner wall eh, with lack of muscular supports. So this muscular, lack of muscular support actually can be demonstrated microscopically. So when they view this uh, anatomy microscopically, they show that because of lack of this muscular wall, the vascular tissue in hemorrhoids is actually is a sinusoidal type. So it's more towards the arteries. That's why when you have uh, bridging of this sinusoid the blood that comes out in hemorrhoid is bright red it's not venous type it's not dark blue it's a bright red so in other words or in bed is a better in a better definition okay uh, when there is injuries or frequent assaults to this anal cushions which is a cushion of vascular tissue usually situated at 3, 3 3rd, 7 and 11 o'clock uh, of the anal canal uh, that will lead to lack of muscular wall and as a result whenever there is increased pressure in the rectum alright increased pressure in the rectum this vascular cushion will protrude down and together if it is injury occur in the mucosa of this vascular tissue there will be bleedings like always been uh, presented during our clinical case so repeated assaults to this anal cushions will result in chronic loss of muscular walls and that will result in hemorrhage. So, uh, so what are the risk factors for the patient to develop, uh, develop hemorrhage? Patient with history of chronic constipation, uh, pregnancy, obesity patients, uh, injury, why because of heart disease eh? and prolonged straining. The, this this action will cause disruptions of the muscular supportive tissue of the anal canal. So, after a period of time, this supportive tissue muscular walls become disrupted. In normal individual, anal cushion provides continence to the anal canal. Provide continence, prevent leak of liquids and gas. So we can have a good grip. And there will be no uh, uh, leaking of this intestinal content that will lead to pruritus or bleeding because of injury to the mucosa. 
alright ok so that is hemorrhoids alright injuries to the anal cushion lead to lack of muscular wall and as a result this anovascular cushions they become disrupted injured and leads to all the symptoms it can get infected it can get bleed it can get thrombus so how you classify so hemorrhoids can be classified into external and internal hemorrhoids anything below the dented line eh? and the canal just 4 cm upper one fourth is dented line below 3 cm is uh, external part and then the lining also different below that is anodum means uh, squamous cell carcinoma but with lack of skin eh? lack of this squamous part Alright, and they are very sensitive to the skin because supplied by somatic. So this area is called anodum. And number of the dentate line, they are less pain because it is supplied by viscera. So what happens is, below the dentate line, external hemorrhoids. It's more painful, associated with protrusion of this mucosa eh, uh, to the skin. Eh, and it is painful. Alright, and then... How you classify this? Usually by actually by symptoms of the patients. Grade one usually there is no swelling. There is no just there is maybe the thing is just bulge into the lumen of the inner canal and, and can associate with bleeding or the symptoms of pruritus. The second degree. This is actually what patients say to you. Secondary, this, there is protrusions or bulging huh, during bowel movements. So, but it is reduced spontaneously after the defecation. Third, grade 3 means protrusions after bowel movement, but patient be able to reduce it spontaneously. And fourth means it is irreducible, completely irreducible or prolapse. So, that is what patient tells you when you examine you can confirm the diagnosis remember uh, all of this you need to differentiate with other differential diagnosis whenever patient have with acute pain other differential could be acute and officials eh? chronic pain chronic and officials eh? then can be uh, if pain eh? in hemorrhoids pain usually associated with thrombus hemorrhoids and management of thrombus hemorrhoid is to relieve the thrombus. It's not hemorrhoid to me eh? because it is very painful. It is thrombus me we can just make a need or step relieve the clots and patient will have relief of pains. And you can have if bleeding you need to rule out as well eh? uh, as a, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, colorectal cancer, NL fissures. Eh? and uh, other chronic fistula in anos and no wards there are many different you know, of very anal abscess so you need to bring this patient his pain patient is in pain you can't do bedside examinations severe pain in the future you cannot put in protoscope when patient is not under special anesthesia so the best thing is to bring this patient to operation theater and perform this under anesthesia so you can visualize properly what actually the uh, diagnosis all right so that is hemorrhoids so in acute condition give symptomatic treatments eh? uh, i mean in in the patient come for the first time before the system the medical treatment means you have to encourage patient to take high fiber diet okay high fiber diet stool bulking agent increase in the intake of the fibers and for symptomatic relief they can have six baths and 40 degrees Celsius temperature of water put put the cloth there and then do that for 10 15 minutes reduce the inflammation and reduce the swelling and there are other things uh, non operative surgery such as rubber banding you can do it uh, on the basis patient do not need to be admitted and last 
but not least is surgical procedure such as staple, laser and open hemorrhoidectomy okay that is about hemorrhoids so basically uh, it is very easy to make a diagnosis and remember more as patient admitted for hemorrhoids if simple hemorrhoid they won't get admitted they won't come to the hospital because they will be shy all right normally they come when it is already grade four uh, they come and admitted or if they come to clinic it's already grade two or grade three for several years fail of medication you remember they give deflon or all this thing eh? stool stopping agent but it's not uh, relief okay so you have to change your style their lifestyle prevent them from sitting at the toilet uh, reading internet facebook uh, in the toilet just do their job in five minutes and out and also change your lifestyle change their occupations reduce their weight okay all right i don't want to talk more because at more actually the the surgical part is long there are complicated procedures and it's a bit advanced you know? but rubber banding is daycare procedure and majorities of these hemorrhoids can be treated based rubber banding we use uh, protoscope eh? and then we aim at the norm the common sites of the hemorrhoids the swellings usually grade 2 grade 3 we can do rubber bandings and we apply this rubber banding with suctions cannula onto the rubber onto the hemorrhoid and suck it maximum and then release the rubber band so the hemorrhoid will be strangled and after going through a process of ischemia it will fall off completely yeah? so remember hemorrhoids yeah, is uh, what do you call it vascular anal cushions with lack of muscular walls and everyone have these anal cushions but we the one uh, asymptomatic we have a good muscular wall muscular support so persistent assault to these anal cushions will result in disruptions of the supporting structures which is muscular wall result in protrusions of this anal cushion containing uh, sinusoid fibrovascular structures and that's how hemorrhoids occur thank you very much all right thank you very much